Okay. Got to get my monitor fired up here. Hopefully I'm in focus. I can't tell right now. It looks like I am. I've got a little iPad here that I use to kind of see where I am in the video. So let me get that set up real quick. Takes a second. Welcome to Crown and Comments, November 2021. Um, in my last Moto vlog, I asked you to vote on whether or not you wanted crown and comments or coffee and comments. And I didn't get one single vote for coffee and comments. Everybody wanted crown and comments. So this is my second uh, drink of the night. I don't usually drink two, but I am tonight. What is your favorite adult beverage if you have one put it in the comments down below so I just brought my notes with me I'm not using a teleprompter tonight this is I'm gonna pretty much just wing it and we're just gonna have a, a little conversation uh, tonight's video and crown and comments is sponsored by me Sponsored by Cruise Man's maintenance videos for the 2001 to 2017 Goldwing and for the 2018 Plus Goldwing. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. But uh, as I mentioned in my last Moto vlog, I asked everybody if you liked Crown in comments or Coffee in comments, and everybody voted for Crown. So here we are. I'm going to start out by telling you that I was out of town for a, just a few days this last week. Uh, we did a, another cruise. It was just a two-day cruise. Uh, we were invited by MSC Cruises to attend the naming celebration of their newest ship. And uh, they invited us down to Miami for a couple of days. And so I haven't gotten too many videos out, obviously, on Cruise Man's. YouTube channel, but that's going to change. And uh, we've be, been just having some really, really nice riding weather in the mornings here and in the afternoons. I mean, it was like, it was like 65 degrees this afternoon, so it's really nice. Just so you know, it's real. I sold my GoPro. I keep getting emails and messages from everybody. I put that in my last Moto vlog that I had a GoPro I was trying to sell, the GoPro Hero 8. And it sold in about 10 minutes. So I've already shipped it off to the gentleman that purchased it. Um, for the rest of you that sent me the emails, I, I tried to email most of you back to let you know I'd already sold it. I appreciate your interest. I'm sorry it's already sold and already shipped out. I may end up selling my other Hero 8 if I choose to get another Hero 10 Black. The problem I have with getting the Hero 10 is GoPro has changed the way they sell their cameras, and it's a really screwed up deal. Basically, uh, to get the best price, uh, they try to sell it for like $500, but if you sign up for their annual, I don't even know what they call it, it's some sort of a website where you can upload your your videos, and I don't know, it, it's it's another one of these things where they want you to subscribe to an annual fee like 50 bucks a year. Well, if you sign up for that, you can get the GoPro for $3.99 instead of $4.99. Well, I did that on the first GoPro. I went ahead and signed up for their stupid annual thing, got the $3.99 price, and I put myself a reminder on my iPhone and on my Mac that, you know, a few days before the year is up to cancel it because I don't want to pay the $49 a year subsequent years. I'll never use the website. I don't care about the website. I just want the camera. Anyway, the problem is if you buy a second GoPro, you got to go through this a second time. Now, I don't know why you'd ever want to subscribe. So in other words, if you're a company that has 10 GoPro cameras, you're going to have to buy 10 subscriptions if you want to get the best price on the GoPro. It's just insane. I think it's borderline 
deceptive. I just don't like it. I don't like that. I'm tired of subscriptions. I'm tired of people trying to get me to subscribe to things because then I have to remember uh, to cancel. I just got through canceling my UMA subscription. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with UMA, but it was a voice, it's a voice over IP company. And we'd been using this service for five years. And uh, of course, you have to have an internet connection, which we do. We have our internet through Frontier. It's a fiber optic. And UMA was our voice over IP provider. And it never really worked good. I mean, I, um, it just, we, the calls would not necessarily drop, but you never could hear the other party very good. I don't know what it was. It certainly isn't our internet connection because we've got the fastest internet, you know, 500 megabits up and down. So it's not our internet. And uh, we tried everything to get it to work. I was on tech support with them. We did everything. I, I bought brand new phones, new Panasonic wireless phones. And I don't know, it just never worked very good. So we finally decided to cut the cord and just go completely wireless. We just have our, I, Ricky and I both have an iPhone. So we're just going to have our iPhones now. We're not going to have a landline. It's not really a landline anyway, because it's voice over IP. Well, I called UMA to cancel this, and it was another one of those serious XM moments where you have to go through four or five people to try to cancel. They don't want you to cancel. And, uh, of course, I can't understand the people I'm talking to, probably because they're using UMA, and plus they speak some ungodly language that I don't, I don't speak their beautiful language. So... In this broken English, I'm trying to get this account canceled. Well, what reminded me to cancel UMA is I just got my invoice or my bill on my credit card, my charge on my credit card statement for their annual fee. And their annual fee is like $137. So I was paying $137 a year. I know this has nothing to do with motorcycles, but we're going to talk about it anyway. I was $137 a year. And I think $7.70 a month, something like that. So, you know, 250 maybe $225, $230 a year total. So I told Ricky, let's just get use our iPhones. We don't need a landline. The only time we get calls anyway, it's some political thing or it's some uh, trying to sell me an extended warranty for the car. It's a scam. Every call I get is a scam anyway. Why do I have a landline? Anyway. So I got this charge on my credit card for $137, and guess what? Uh, I call UMA to cancel. I say, I just, you know, we're not going to use this anymore. We're, and anyway, I was on the phone for about 40 minutes total before I finally, they got it down to where they were literally going to give it to me for no, no monthly fee. I said, no, I just want to cancel. These bastards, these thieving bastards, do not refund you that $137. They keep that. So I don't get a prorated refund because I only had it for maybe five days after I got the invoice or got the charge on the card. But I guess somewhere in their contract, it says that if you cancel, you forfeit this money. Another scam, another thieving company out to rip people off. So anyway, I pissed me off and you're the only ones I have to vent that to. So congratulations. Okay. Now let's get on with your comments because as you know, Crown and Comments is supposed to be my reaction to your emails, your letters, your comments. And I have a few of them here that I printed out. Some of these are emails. Some of these are comments on my YouTube channel. It just depends on how they come in. But before I do get started on that, I would like to remind you that if you're passionate about motorcycles and pissed off about subscription companies, you may want to subscribe to this channel. It's completely free. Just click that little subscribe button. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when I come out with a new video, which I try to do every few days. So, 
And this is something I do about once a month where I just sit down and go through comments that people put on Facebook or YouTube or emails, whatever. Well, the first one I'm going to talk about, I got an email from Daniel. And I'm going to read it real quick. I'm, I'm going to just hit the high points here. Just watch the video on uh, whether or not to buy the service manual. That's a video I did a while back. Recently, my, I had my 4,000-mile service performed by my dealership in Lewiston, Maine. As you said in the video, I assumed they knew what they were doing. <laughs> and he says, made an ass of you and me, assume. I'm sure you've heard that. When I read the invoice, I noticed only one plug washer. I think he means, you know, like a crush washer and one filter. And when I inquired, they first said that what was needed. Uh, I, it's hard to read this. Basically, they told him that he was going to need uh, three separate washers, three separate drain plugs with washers and two filters. I guess he was going to have the DCT filter replaced also. They could not even service an oil change properly. Worst part is when they added the new oil to the bike, they put in the recommended 4.9 quarts, added to the about one quart of dirty oil they didn't drain out, overfilling the oil. I checked it myself. I couldn't believe that an accountant had to tell them that they did it wrong. And after my rant, right there in their shop, they completely redid the oil change from scratch. Now, when he says the one quart of dirty oil, I suspect they did not put the bike on the side stand to get the rest of the oil out, which I talk about in my maintenance video series, that I would be surprised if a lot of Honda dealers don't do that because they don't have my videos. If they had my videos, their service techs would know how to do the oil change properly. Um, thank you for the information. I didn't realize how incompetent the dealership can be signed Danny G. Yes, I get emails and texts and messages like this all the time. Very, very common. Um, a lot of these young guys that go to work for Honda dealers as service techs, they are motorcycle enthusiasts, but they're into sport bikes or they're into dirt bikes. They don't care about working on an old man's bike like a Goldwing. They could care less or they couldn't care less, I should say. They just don't take the time or they don't have the training. I don't know. So anyway, Daniel, I hope you got it resolved. Thank you for your email. And to the rest of you out there, this is why I recommend that on things like this, maintenance items, you just do it yourself. Because if you do it yourself, you know it's going to get done right. You don't have to worry about some young kid hungover, <laughs> probably because he had a little too much crown the night before. And, uh, you know, anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, second comment or email I received. And I'll put these pictures up on the screen, but they're very hard to see. I can tell what he's talking about, but it's a little hard to, to tell from the pictures that he sent. He even apologizes. Uh, sorry for the bad shots, but this is the best I could take after a ride Right after I turned off the bike, the top two temperature gauge lights and the bottom one in the gas gauge light stayed on and faded out gradually, but did not go off completely. Now, these are lights that are on the little uh, LED screens or LCD screens uh, on the left and right hand side of, you know, next to the speedometer and the tachometer. I disconnected the battery, but no change. Any ideas? I hope it's not a hardware issue in the dash lights. It's a 2021 DCT. I have never seen this or heard of this before, but basically I call this a ghosting, uh, a, a kind of a ghosting image of the lights. You turn the bike off and these lights begin to, they rather than just going off, they fade out and they never completely go out. So they're like, it's almost like they're holding a, a charge, like a capacitor in there is holding some uh, electrical, enough of electrical charge to still show some light. I think he even said he turned off the lights in his garage to make sure there was no ambient light causing this. So has Anybody else out there had this happen to them? Have you ever noticed this ghosting of 
dash lights when you turn your bike off. I've never seen it. I've never heard anybody even talk about it. I recommended that he take it back to the dealer and see about getting a warranty replacement. I don't know. Maybe they'd have to replace the, uh, the gauge cluster or the dash. I'm not sure. Anyway, be curious to know if anybody out there has ever heard of that. Now, uh, next is a message from Bo Ford. B, that's B-E-A-U. Hello from Florida. I work at Destination Power Sports in Punta, Go Punta Gorda, Florida. I recently sold a customer a 2019 Goldwing DCT. We do not have the emergency code for startup for the bike, and the new owner is asking about getting the code that seems to be lost. Can you help? Uh, and then he asked me to call him or email him back. Uh, this is a very interesting point. Basically, he's talking about the little, you know, that little tag that comes on your key fob when you buy a Goldwing or when you buy one from Honda. And it's also something I need to update my uh, video that I have on purchasing a used Goldwing. If you're going to buy a used Goldwing, you need to make sure the owner has that code and has that little tag or at least knows what the eight or ten digit or whatever it is code is for an emergency start procedure because if you lose that code you might be screwed um, I think there's a way to contact Honda you have to contact American Honda probably send them your VIN number would be my guess it seems like I vaguely remember somebody telling me that they did this and Honda has a way to look up that code and send it to you, but I have no idea what you have to go through uh, to get that done. The only other option uh, would be to buy another key fob and have it programmed to the bike. And when you buy a key fob from Honda, it will come with another one of those emergency codes. So, if you are buying a used 2018 to 2021 Honda Goldwing, make sure the dealer or the owner has that code to start the bike in the event of an emergency, because without it, you could be dead on the side of the road. Not you dead personally, but the bike could be dead. Okay. Number four. Hi, Chris. Hope you're doing well. I was abroad for a vacation, just saw your YouTube video about the skid plate. Oh, okay. This is actually from the gentleman that created that uh, belly pan. If you remember a few weeks ago, or a couple weeks ago, I had the belly pan installation video, the one from Wing Stuff. Well, this is the gentleman that actually designed it, developed it, manufactured it, I, I think, but I think Wing Stuff is marketing it. And he asked me if they're going to make some modifications. They were, he's telling me they're going to make some modifications to the belly pan because of the comments. We got a lot of comments on that belly pan and a lot of not so positive comments. And apparently he is updating the design and going to be uh, offering a removable plate to cover the oil filter. And he is sent, I think he's going to be sending me out a new belly pan. I believe he says the new one here is like double the thickness of the original one, which is going to be interesting because um, it was fairly difficult to install the other one because you kind of had to bend it to get it to go into certain places. But obviously, I assume it will install. So uh, I'm going to... I did what he asked. I, I did unlist the video. The video is still out there. If you have the link, you can still see the video. But uh, I didn't keep it in my list of videos until I get this new one in. And I'm going to redo the video. I'm not going to redo the installation and all that because it's going to install the same way. But I do want to show you uh, the update that he made to this skid plate. He calls it a skid plate. I call it a belly pan. Um, so 
And he sent me a picture of this new design, and it looks like it's going to be a, a, a removable plate, maybe with four screws or something. I'm not sure. I'll just have to wait till I see it, and then I'll let you know as soon as I see it. So if you've been looking for that video and you don't see it on my YouTube channel, it's because the gentleman that manufactured or designed it asked me to take it down until he gets the new one out, and I did. I don't normally do that, but I agreed to do that. I think I've also communicated with uh, Max over at Traction, who I believe is also developing a belly pan. And uh, hopefully I will be able to see what he's coming up with. And I have no dog in this hunt. Uh, you know, I, I don't get any I don't get any commission or money regardless of which belly pan or no belly pan whatever you buy or don't buy it's just um, you know I just want you to have the information I'll just show you what I see and do my best to try to install it and show you the trials and tribulations if any and uh, if I think it's a good product and if it is great and if it didn't then you have to make the decision for yourself now I do want to uh, make you aware, since we're coming up on Thanksgiving, and we're, which means we're coming up on Black Friday, and I told you in the very beginning of the video that this video is sponsored by My Cruise Man's Garage Maintenance Videos. Well, we have a Black Friday special, limited time, and that is you can save 20% off the cost of my maintenance videos. Now, if you have a 2018 to 2022 Goldwing, Maybe you have one on order, and you know we're going to talk about the 20, 2022 Goldwing. That's the last thing we're going to talk about. I think it's the last thing. Let me get my notes here. Yeah, well, a couple of things. But before I get into that, about the 2022 Goldwing, I want to make you aware of our Black Friday special. Save 20%. Go to my website. You'll see the links. You just have to enter the promo code BLACK20. No spaces, just BLACK20 all uppercase, and uh, when you purchase these through Vimeo, you can download these to your computer for viewing offline for your own personal use. You can't give them away. You can't loan them to people. You can't you know, distribute them, but you can use them on any computer, any iPhone, iPad for your own personal use. Now for the 2018 Plus, which means 2018 and later Goldwing, there's 73 videos in the series, and there's some other bonus footage too. And if you have a 2001 to 2017 Goldwing, I think there's 35 videos in that set. Honda has finally announced the 2022 models and basically very little change in the 2022 Goldwing. Now, there's a lot of videos out there on YouTube that are where they talk about or they say they talk about the 2022 Goldwing. And they're nothing more than clickbait. There's actually a couple of different channels that they basically, what they do is they're taking some of my footage, some of my video and photos, and just putting together like a slideshow and with a little bit of voiceover. And they're talking about the 2022 Goldwing. And they were doing this three or four weeks ago before the new Goldwing had even been announced. It's basically clickbait. And I even filed a complaint with YouTube about a copyright infringement because they had taken some of the images that I created and were using them in their video, plus some of the video that I had created. Basically, it's the same motorcycle. Now, it is on the Honda website. I say it's the same motorcycle as the 2021. Honda doesn't really say if there's any changes. I have not seen a press release. So I don't know if there's things that have been added that they're just not saying on the website because Honda's website can be a little vague sometimes. I did find the only thing that really has changed is that you can no longer get the, I believe it's the manual transmission in a bagger model. You can only get a DCT in the bagger model. On the tour model, you can still get the manual transmission or the DCT. I was disappointed in the colors. I was hoping that Honda would come out with some more interesting color choices, and all they came out with was this new ultra blue metallic for the tour models. 
And I don't, haven't seen it in person, obviously, so I don't know if I like it or not. It is not the same blue that they had in 2018, which I was not a huge fan of. Honestly, I didn't particularly care for that blue. I really liked the blue that I had on my 2012 Goldwing. It was kind of a blue and silver. I was disappointed that Honda did not come out with a two-tone option. I really loved the red and black from the original 2018 airbag model, that red and black uh, uh, color scheme. And I also liked, I even liked the red and black from the 2021, even though it did have that wider, kind of strange wide pinstripe. And this one looks like it has a wider pinstripe as well, but it's not two-tone, it's just blue. And I think they're also going to have black, a black metallic which might not be bad. I, I don't know. I'll have to see it. I hope if it has that matte front and matte trunk, then it's a deal killer for me. If it was all metallic, uh, it, it might be okay. I might actually like that. But black is such a pain to keep clean. So I was disappointed. I was hoping they would come out with a, you know, a, maybe a pearl yellow, go back to the old pearl yellow color and try that again, or just something different. But uh, it is a different blue, but I don't know if it's different enough to be compelling. The bad news, I guess, for the 2022 is that it, there's really no changes. There's no new features. There's no, uh, it's the same GPS as far as we can tell. I haven't seen the press release, but as far as we can tell, it's virtually the same bike. The good news, though, is the price only went up $200. So I was expecting a bigger price increase. Now, I would not bank on that. If you're thinking about getting a new 2022 model, let's say six or eight months from now, um, I, you know, anything can happen. So they can raise prices mid year. They, this is just the price they've announced when the bike's introduced, and they should start shipping in January, it's, or at least that's what my friend at Shawnee Honda told me. Now, I don't know what you guys in Canada are going to be paying, or in the UK. If you're from the UK or Canada, uh, put in the comments down below. If you found the new pricing for the new 2022 Goldwings, put it in the comments down below, because there's we have a lot of viewers around the world in Europe, uh, UK, Canada, Mexico, Brazil, uh, just everywhere, uh, Australia. So wherever you're from, if you know the pricing in your country, uh, please put it in the comments down below. I'd much appreciate it. And like I said, the availability, I was told that here in the U.S., they're going to start shipping in January. The only thing I found interesting is that they're going to be offering Homelink as an option. Now, this is how they specified it on the website. They say that Homelink is an option. I don't know if that means from the factory, or does that mean a dealer installed option? They don't say. They don't really specify. And it's the only accessory that Honda mentions as an option. Doesn't mention the puddle lights. It doesn't mention the luggage rack. It doesn't mention nothing. Just Homelink. So I found that kind of odd, and I don't know what that implies. So I was kind of hoping they would just include it, but they didn't. So what do you think? What is your impression of the 2022 Honda Goldwing? Have you even seen it yet? Go to the Honda. I'll put the link in the description of this video to go to the you know Honda website to see it. If you're in the U.S., you may not be able to get that link to work in your country if you're not in the U.S. I know there is a website in Canada where this is visible. So anyway... That's my thoughts right now on the 2022. Hopefully I can twist the arm of the guy, uh, my friends up there at Shawnee Honda. Maybe they'll let me come up there in January or February when they get one in that's serviced and not sold and let me do a test ride and a review again. Uh, I don't know. They're probably pretty put out with me by now because I go up there every year to do a test ride. But hopefully they will. And if they do, I will... Uh, post that video. Now, one other thing I'm interested in knowing, for especially for our European friends, and that is we might accidentally be getting the NT1100 here in the U.S. And this is a model that's based on the Africa Twin platform. 
It is a, I call it a sport touring bike, the NT 1100. You can find pictures and videos of it online. And there's rumors that it might be coming to the U.S. And it's a very interesting looking motorcycle. It has a TFT display. It's got CarPlay and Android Auto. It's got Bluetooth. It does not have an electric windshield, but it does have an adjustable windshield. It has some nice saddlebags, and I believe you can get an optional trunk. And I think I saw a video where they said they expect, if it comes to the U.S., it'd be in the $15,000 range. My question to you is, and it looks like a pretty cool looking bike, how many of you would be interested in that motorcycle? Would you be interested in an NT1100? It'd kind of be a, a replacement for the old ST1300, you might say, even though this is a twin, and I'm sure it's not going to have the power of the ST1300, probably not as comfortable as the ST1300, but I don't know. Um, it looks like an interesting bike. I'll tell you what it reminds me of. I think it's a competitor to the Versus, the big Versus, the 1,000cc Versus, even though that's a, I think it's a four-cylinder bike. But I believe that is a market that Honda's missing out on in the U.S., and that's that kind of heavy uh, sport touring bike, like a Concours or something like that. Don't really have anything like that other than the Goldwing. That's it. I don't have anything else to say. You know, I'm just going to finish my drink. I'm going to, you know, start collecting more comments. If you have any thoughts on this video, please put them down below. If you enjoyed the video, as always, please, please give it a thumbs up. I do have one more announcement to make. I've been telling you, I've been teasing you for the last two or three motor vlogs that had, that had an announcement to make about 2022. February will be the 10-year anniversary of Cruise Man's Garage YouTube channel. Can you believe it? And so I am trying to get as many subscribers as we can. Now, I don't get paid by YouTube for subscribers. It didn't, it didn't make me any money. It's just more of a... I guess it's just a personal goal, a status thing. So um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I'd appreciate you subscribing. It doesn't cost anything. And I uh, would appreciate you sharing these videos with your friends. You know, share them on your social media or on your channel, whatever. So anyway, next year, February will be the 10-year anniversary, and it will be our 20-year anniversary for CruiseReport.com's, uh, actually just CruiseReport.com, the, the company, the business. It's hard to believe it's been that long. But uh, Cruise Man's Garage will be 10 years old in January, or in February. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching, and remember, right often, Ride safe. I can't remember the last one. Shit. What a... Uh, ride. Ride often. Ride. I don't know. Just ride. Have fun. I'll think of it. I'll go back and watch one of my old videos to see what my, my ending is. <laughs> sad. It's really sad. I need more to drink. Okay, I'll see y'all next time.